I'm willing to bet that most of our listeners are affected by, or at least know someone affected by a developmental disability. They tend to be invisible, so you may not be able to see it, but they're there. That doesn't mean these people don't need any assistance, and that's where Community Options comes in. This nonprofit provides help with things like employment and housing. They also host a 5K in several states to raise money for the cause. Dina Casalaspro is the managing director of Community Options, and I spoke to her about her work and the race in Glenrock. All right, Dina, thanks for coming to Brave New Radio. Uh, now, how did you get into helping people with disabilities? I started straight out of college working for a small nonprofit and working with individuals who were looking to work out in the community and find jobs. Since I've been with Community Options for the past four years, I oversee their uh, Community Options Enterprises for New Jersey, and we oversee, I oversee their our programs that operate throughout the day as well as our entrepreneurial businesses. What got you into the, the field? You know, out of college, I always thought I wanted to work with children, and my idea was to figure out you know, what I could do that would make a difference. And uh, I fell into a nonprofit and I loved what I did. And I loved working with individuals with disabilities. They're always so happy and enthusiastic and love to go to work. Unlike some of us, Um, they love their job. They love their peers. And it really just, you know, it pulled on my heartstrings and I've been doing it now for 14 years. That's great. Uh, Community Options helps people affected by intellectual and developmental disabilities, right? Correct. Uh, Who does that include? It includes anyone that is diagnosed with a developmental disability. This could be someone who has, you know, is on the autism spectrum, who has had brain injury, who has, is wheelchair bound. We also have medical day programs that um, assist individuals throughout the day to allow the families to go to work. We have nurses on staff that provide medical attention to the individuals, help feed them, change them, and give them a day fulfilled with activities. And what special considerations do people with these disabilities need? They should be treated just like anybody else. Um, They may need assistance with certain tasks throughout the day, but their independence and their goal to be independent is the most important part of what we do and what our mission is. So we may have staff that provide the assistance that they need in order to accomplish their goals, but ultimately these individuals strive to be able to be in the community independently, work independently, and live a normal life. Right. And... Community Options' top services for these guys are housing and employment? Correct. So tell me about the the homes. We have have. homes all throughout the nine states that we operate in. Um, I should say 10 states, I'm sorry, that we operate in. And um, each of the homes are homes that you or I would want to live in. They're beautiful. They're um, modernized. They each have each individual has their own bedroom. There's staff in the home that will help them cook, will help them clean, will help them take their medications. But the homes operate as though a home you and I would want to live in. The homes are beautiful, fully renovated, ADA compliant, and when you walk in, you get the sense that these individuals love being there and belong with their peers within the home. Right. And uh, you have businesses that you run um, to employ uh, these people with disabilities. Correct. Uh, New Jersey has four daily planets, which are our, their office-based buildings that have a program that runs outside of them and the individuals will clean the building. They will help the tenants with printing services. They will help the tenants with any type of service that they need to, you know, to complete their day. Um, We have a daily planet in Morristown, Morristown in Burlington County, and two in Princeton. And we will be opening one in Wayne um, in early spring. Nice. 
Uh, and you also have uh, more traditional job training. Is that right? We do. Um, before I get to the job training, we also have two vasefuls, which is our oh. flower shops. We have one in Edison and one in Princeton. And now that uh, Valentine's Day is coming, it's going to be one of our busiest holidays mm-hmm. besides Mother's Day. Um, and then we own we also own a Presence of Mind, which is a gift shop out in Flanders, which is Morris County. Um, and within all of these businesses, we pay the individuals minimum wage or better to provide a service to the customers and they are employed by community options to help run the business and provide the service to the customers that come in, whether it be doing a flower arrangement or packaging one of the items that was purchased from our flower shop or helping our tenants maintain their business by providing a service to them. Um, besides the businesses, we do provide supported employment out in the community where we will receive referrals from different funding sources throughout New Jersey, um, whether it be the Division of Vocational Rehabilitation or Medicaid. We are given a referral of an individual who is looking for employment, and we will assign an employment specialist to work with that individual to go out into the community and fill out resumes and teach them on-job skill training, as well as ensure that they understand where their natural supports are on site. And you're also involved with the medical daycare? It's a medical day program. It's called Red Ribbon. Um, I am not directly involved with running the programs, but Community Options does have two Red Ribbons currently. One is in Wayne, right on Hamburg Turnpike, and the other one is in Hillsborough. And the individuals, again, are referred to us through Medicaid, and they are medically fragile individuals that require medical assistance throughout the day. We pick them up, we transport them to the program, and then transport them back home. And there's nurses on staff throughout the day that will assist these individuals in ensuring that their toileting needs are met, their eating needs are met, and then there's activities that happen all throughout the day that really enrich their lives. If you ever walk into my office on Hamburg Turnpike, first thing in the morning, there is music playing, and many of the individuals have instruments going, and it is the most lively, exciting place you can be at 9 a.m. Nice. Very nice. Now, let's get to the upcoming Cupid's Chase. Uh, It's a 5K? Correct. It's a 5K. Um, It's held in 31 cities across nine states. I am hosting the one in Glen Rock this year. Um, Medals and awards are given to all the runners as well as trophies. That will be awarded to the top three male and female finishers. Um, Cupid's Chase is held is in last year in 2019 had over 6,100 runners, which was wow. the most ever. We're looking to top that this year. The Chase runs all the Chase runs are USATF certified, and all the funds that are raised stay local and support the people with developmental disabilities who are served by community options. The first Cupid's Chase race was held um, in Princeton in 2009, and it's. And the Cupid's Chase is always held this Saturday before Valentine's time, Valentine's Day, hence the name, Cupid's Chase. <laughs> um, last year, Glen Rock had 170 runners, oh, and wow. we raised $23,000. And I'm looking to increase that number and have um, as many runners as possible sign up and reach out to new donors that really want to be a part of a great organization that does huge things for individuals with developmental disabilities. Yeah, I see your team's already raised over $700. Glenrock? Uh, Your team. My team, yes. My personal team has. Um, But the race itself, um, we have donors, um, vendors that we use throughout the year, pharmacies that we use, private contracting companies that have also given donations. um, Mm. And, you know, we encourage everyone to get onto the website and um, join to race if you're not local to Wayne area, anywhere you're local to. But if you're local to here, Glen Rock is the race you want to sign up for. Um, Eight o'clock starts registration at the Glen Rock Pool, which is at 390 Doremus Ave in Glen Rock. And then 10 a.m. sharp begins the race. Yeah. Do you know the path it's going to take? Yes, the path is, um, I don't know the street names of where we're going to be going, but um, the path has already been assigned. It's the same path that they've been doing past years. Um, And we have Glen Rock police that will 
take them off and then also follow them around. So it's a completely secure shutdown area. And, uh, you know, it's pretty amazing. The last four years that I've been a part of this race, there's been the same individual that has finished first and he <laughs> comes in in like under 16 minutes and it's either f- beyond freezing out yeah. or and he's running in shorts and, and short sleeves and comes back and it's like he just you know, ran around the corner. Um, <laughs> we have runners that come sh- dressed up. They all look like Cupid. Um, oh. It's really cute. We have shirts that are given to all the runners that say either available or unavailable. Um, available obviously means that you're single and unavailable means you're either married or in a relationship. And uh, they're so excited to put those on and get ready to run. So it's a really nice thing to see everyone um, support community options and the race. Are you going to be running this or are you just going to walk? <laughs> I will be waiting for everyone to return. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will not be running the race. Um, I am there um, where we have a packet pickup for anyone who doesn't want to register in the morning and is registered early or doesn't want to come as early to pick up their shirt and their bib um, at the Roadrunners on Route 17 in Paramus, um, Friday, February 7th from 5 to 8. And then obviously Saturday, February 8th, we begin with registration at 8 a.m. where everyone who has signed up or would like to sign up can pick up their shirt and their bib and prepare for the race. Um, You know, we've had donations from Trader Joe's and Starbucks for coffee and water, bananas, bagels. So it's really nice to see local businesses also do what they can to help out. Yeah. What is what is it uh, like? It's I know it's freezing. It's February. Is it more like uh, people dressed up in coats running or what is that? I don't see many people with coats, I have to be honest. I see people with a hat on, maybe some gloves, and they have, some are in long pants, many are in shorts, wow. and off they go. And it doesn't even look like it phases them. And I'm bundled up, and I'm unsure how they're doing it, but they're doing it, and they love it. And many of them come back every year, um, and some come, you know, a lot of people that do the race do it because they are supporting community options Um, and they come each year to be a part of the race because they want us to understand that uh, they're running obviously but that they want us to to know that they're supporting community options Mm -hmm. and this is one of our fundraisers and uh, we look for this to grow each year right and uh, where can our listeners find out more if they want to sign up or support They can go on to our website, which is www.comop.org, and follow the link for Cupid's Chase. Once you're on the Cupid's Chase website, you can go right on to the Glen Rock site and sign up or any site that is local to where they will be on the day of February 8th. Great. Dina Casalaspro, race director for Cupid's Chase in Glen Rock, thanks for talking with me. And good luck that day. Thank you. Have a good day.